dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it's 5 o'clock. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Cassidy Strickland. Hope your week started off great yesterday on Monday. Now Tuesday's coming in. Doesn't look too bad outside right now, just pretty cold. Yeah, really cold. I actually thought that there was like precipitation on my windshield. I went to get it off and it was mm -hmm. ice. And so that really stuck with me how cold it was. And yesterday was a really mucky day. It was just gross, overcast, just mm -hmm. not really the best day to start off your Monday with, but hopefully we'll be able to see some sun today. So let's bring in Brandon and see if he'll be able to deliver on that hope. We'll see. It's going to be a clearing process throughout the day. Some slick roads possible this morning. We have had some snow overnight and still a little bit out there this morning. Let's take a look at the camera network here at 5 o'clock and you can see up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain. It's fog again this morning. And a little bit more snow. You see it there on the sides of the roads. Reports last night for a little while that people were trapped up there due to basically the road being a solid sheet of ice. Uh, someone messaged me and I had to get a, I had to have them call 911 to get a salt truck up there because it was pretty rough. And you see a little bit of snow coverage on the road again this morning. So higher elevations especially. Be careful. Didn't have any problems on my way into work uh, about midnight last night on flat ground. So just be careful. Wet roads could be some uh, slick spots across the region. You see some fog trying to build in, in both Whitesburg and here in hazard outside the WMT studio. So be careful. Give yourself plenty of time. Some patchy fog this morning. Not as bad as it was yesterday, at least not at this point. Seven miles at Logan, Pikeville, Wise, and Williamsburg. And we're seeing three miles there at London. Pinpoint Doppler radar on first glance looks pretty clear, right? But if you turn up the sensitivity a little bit, you still see a little bit of moisture across parts of the region this morning. So again, some drizzle or some flakes could still be flying in some areas. Temperatures, you can see where the clouds are and the clouds are not. Where they are not is Richmond, Ashland, and London at 23 and 25 respectively and we see other spots there closer to 30 upper 20s closer to 30 even some closer spots closer to freezing there down toward Middlesbrough so be aware of that a little extra on the coffee meter this morning not too much on the max warming uh, side needed there but it could get closer there especially toward the weekend maybe out the door forecast this morning again some fog some drizzle some flakes otherwise maybe some sunshine a little bit later on as we climb to right around 39 uh, the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will. All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, an East Tennessee congregation is mourning the life of one of their pastors. A coal mining accident in Bell County killed 56 year old Jeffrey Sloan yesterday. Officials say that Sloan was working as a surveyor at the time. We are told he was killed by a piece of heavy equipment. Robert Green has more on Sloan's life beyond the mine. These simple words tell the story of this congregation's complex pain. Well, it was a devastating loss to our church family. Jeff Sloan was uh, more than a, a, uh, uh, an ordinary church member. He was a pastor, and just yesterday, Jeff Sloan performed a baptism. Today, Second Baptist in Clinton hosted a prayer vigil in his honor. Of course, none of us would ever dream that would be his last service with us. The 56-year-old was a man of God and a family man with a wife, two children, and grandchildren. They're processing uh, as best they can. Sloan was working at a Kentucky coal mine when he was killed in an accident some 600 feet below the ground. His second family, his church family, remembers the man that gave everything. Pastor Michael Thompson was his close friend. I don't know of anyone any more loved at our church, and I know that often is said, but it, it is so true. Jeff was previously the pastor at a Virginia church before working part-time at Second Baptist for the past several years. You'd see him here at the church virtually all the time that he wasn't working elsewhere. He would be here. Through tears, this community also shared laughs. They remember Jeff as the Kentucky native, a big fan of the Wildcats. He always had the blue on. Our Tennessee Vol folks, uh, they had a running feud with him, but uh, they loved him and so much, and he loved them. And in a time of grieving, they'll spread that love. Cherish every moment you have with your family. Now, last check, Tom's Fork Mine remains closed as investigators try to determine what exactly went wrong. 
Well, now last week we reported coal mining deaths were at a record low in Kentucky in 2018. The only mining death in the state last year was in Harlan County. 29 year old Hubert Grubbs Jr. died in March in a Cumberland area mine. A total of 12 people died in coal mines across the U.S. in 2018. Well, new this morning, police have identified a body found in Logan County, West Virginia. They say the body of 38-year-old Sean Bailey was found a Sunday near Chapmanville. It was found in the water in the Big Creek area. At this time, police say his death does not appear to be suspicious. And in Wise County, Virginia, investigators say a student was arrested after he was found with a weapon. It happened Friday. Deputies say they were informed about a social media post made by a Central High School student. The student was called to the school's office, and that's when an officer searched him and found a knife in his backpack and a toy gun in his waistband. The student was taken to a juvenile detention facility. He's charged with two counts of possession of a weapon on school property. Well, as the opioid epidemic continues, deputies in Laurel County say another drug is creeping back into play. Right now, they say they are dealing with a high number of crystal meth cases. Deputies also say the drug is most likely being transported on I-75 and distributed to users in the area, which is forcing the sheriff's department to go all out to combat the problem. Crystal meth uh, has its own problems. It's so uh, addictive that we're told that even uh, a first time user uh, may and possibly will become hooked on crystal methamphetamine and it's so addictive that uh, it, it's very difficult to get off of it. Now Deputy Gilbert Richardo said one step, one step meth labs have almost been completely erased from the county. Meanwhile, in Floyd County, Quick Mart has dealt with more than 100 thefts. And with gas stations making their money primarily from merchandise sales, even the smallest theft can affect the entire business. Jack Patel says people who steal from the gas station are usually intoxicated at the time. He has installed nearly 50 cameras to help prevent people from shoplifting. Each time someone is caught on camera, Patel now posts surveillance footage on Facebook. He hopes that the videos will help warn other businesses as well. A woman is facing charges after police say they received a tip from social services about two people staying there using drugs around children. On Friday, police went to the home of Deborah Curry. They say they found a crystal substance scattered on the floor near a bunk bed along with a syringe and glass pipe. Curry faces drug and endangering the welfare of a minor charges. In Clay County, a man was indicted by a grand jury for stabbing a woman in her private area. Johnny Asher faces a charge of first-degree assault. The indictment does not specify why he did this or what he used to stab her with. Authorities said that the woman was seriously injured as a result. The incident allegedly happened back in September. Well, this morning, police continue to look for a missing girl from Ohio. This is Haley Marie Bowling. The 11 year old was last seen in Manchester. Officials believe her mother could be taking her to Grover, North Carolina. Bowling is four foot eight inches tall and weighs 75 pounds. Anyone who sees her is urged to call police. Well, looking across Kentucky this morning, a Boyle County teen could spend years in prison for her role in the 2016 death of her stepmother. 17-year-old Jenna Oakley pleaded guilty to first-degree manslaughter and vehicle theft. Police say Oakley was found in New Mexico with her boyfriend Kenneth Nye days after the death of Rhonda Oakley. Jenna Oakley's attorney asked the court to move the case back to juvenile court. She was supposed to go to trial next week. As part of her plea, Oakley is expected to get a 15-year prison sentence. A distillery employee is dead after what officials are calling a tragic accident. It happened yesterday in Owensboro at Glenmore Distillery. Officials have not released the employee's name at this time. Davis County Coroner Jeff Jones says he was called to the scene for a work-related fall. An autopsy is scheduled for this morning. Operations at the distillery have been suspended until further notice. And this morning we are hearing from the father of an armored truck driver suspected of stealing cash. Mark Espinoza disappeared more than a month ago. He is accused of taking a large amount of money from his truck in the Louisville area. Espinoza's father did not want to appear on camera, but he did agree to talk. He says he has not heard from his son since he disappeared, and he did not notice anything out of the ordinary. 
nothing at all. I saw him walk out that morning like he did every day. When he worked in the morning, he just walked out, went in his car, and I was waiting for him, you know, to get home. And... <laughs> I hope if he's alive that he just turns himself in before someone gets hurt. <laughs> Espinoza lived with his father, and as you heard him mention there, he just is asking his son to come home before someone gets hurt. The FBI and the armored truck company are offering $60,000 in rewards. Well, back to Eastern Kentucky now. A heads up for drivers in Leslie County this morning. Kentucky 2058 between Spruce Pine Creek Road and Lonesome Mountain Lane will be closed beginning tomorrow. Road work originally scheduled to begin today was pushed back. However, the road should be back open by Thursday afternoon. The closure will allow crews to perform slide repair operations. In Abel County, the Middlesbrough Police Department is doing more foot patrol through the downtown area, making their presence more visible. Middlesbrough's new mayor, Rick Nelson, made the suggestion. They hope the changes will allow the officers to bond with the community and the workers at businesses downtown. Officers will stop by businesses frequently to see if they need anything. This can be anything from double checking the doors to make sure they are locked to looking for needles along the streets, which they have found before. We've had uh, foot patrols in the past, and typically whenever we have a, a, an event downtown, such as the concert series that we've had, we'll have officers downtown on foot patrol, and he just wanted more of an organized schedule for doing it. We talked with people who work in downtown Middlesbrough. They say it eases their mind to know that security is being ramped up downtown. 511 and coming up on Mountain News this morning, we will take a closer look at an amazing snow sculpture in Indiana. Plus, a famous actor is preparing to tie the knot again. We will tell you more in your Eye on Entertainment report. Some slick spots are likely, especially in the higher elevations this morning, so take care when you hit the roads. I'll help you plan the rest of your day in about three minutes.